Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Neptune OS 5.0 um, Now this is a Linux based operating system, in fact it's based on Debian 9.0 or Debian Stretch um, and it's mainly focused around its sort of UI and out of box experience uh, it's got lots of multimedia features as well so it's pretty nice let's just quickly go ahead and install this now and Linux obviously I very much doubt it would be on its default list there because it's a rather obscure one so let's just go next and I'm going to be gyms this time and give it 4 gigs of RAM there you go, virtual hard drive let's give it 15 gigs of uh, virtual disk space and let's attach this ISO file there so, let's take a look. So, the Neptune Live. Now, while it's doing this, I'll probably have a little bit of time to tell you some of its main features. Um, so it's built, it's got a built-in plasma desktop environment, it's got very tight security, um, it's got full disk encrypted installations, or they are optional anyway, um, as well as having the plasma vault and something really strange called Zulu Crypt, um, that's also pre-installed, it's like an encryption folder thing to keep all your private stuff in, um, and it's also got a built-in the built-in Chromium browser, uh, which includes obviously HTML5 and Adobe Flash, um, and well, as I've already said, it's based on Debian 9, so should be interesting. Not sure if you heard that. I think that was a startup sound. Hmm. Right, so this is the live CD anyway. It's Gallup I mean. Looks interesting. Well, I'm not going to delve into too much of the UI because it's going to be slow and horrible because it's on the live CD. So I'm just going to go ahead and install it. Funny, the name, um, Neptune, it's a bit of a coincidence really. Um, it was also the name of a an abandoned Microsoft project called well, obviously, Project Neptune. It was from the late nineties, um, English United Kingdom, and not Amsterdam, London. I think there we are. Um, let's go next. Sorry, I'll just quickly whiz through this. Nice set, nice setup process. I say reminds me of the Ubuntu one a little bit, although it's Debian, so technically. Um, Ubuntu is Debian based. Right, so let's just put all this in. It wants me to do a password, so I'm going to do the least secure password in the world. There we are. Logging automatically. I mean, I'm just going to delete this most probably. Uh, next. Right, so here is the nice little install window. Work out it installs within the actual, um, obviously, live CD. Although most of them do there now anyway. Yeah, so like I say, I mean, it's already got quite a nice UI. This is obviously the Plasma desktop, uh, unmistakably. And yeah, and the folders look a little bit Debian esque as well. Hmm. Apparently, so I remember reading somewhere, apparently they've only got three developers working full time on this anyway. So, quite an interesting project really. Anyway, this is going to take forever so I'm just going to speed up the video and then 
obviously resume it once um, something interesting comes along. Right, so uh, the install is now done, so let's just go ahead and restart. Let's just hope it ejects the virtual CD. No, it doesn't. Of course it doesn't. Um, one moment, I'm just going to remove disk from optical drive or some mount, and then we can just reset the VM. I like its boot screen. I like it sort of drops down with the progress bar. It looks really nice. There's its start up sound again. Okay, so I believe uh, it is now completed its installation. Let's go ahead and install this. Install, explore this operating system. Um, so I believe down here we've got the virtual desktops which is quite well quite interesting really um, and here's the Excalibur menu um, which is actually rather nice I like this because it's sort of it's simple it's not one of them stupid ones where you have to scroll through a million times to see something just because it wants to look um, the absolute best it can possibly look I like this because as I say it's laid out simple and um, everything's just where you'd expect it to be really as you can see there's loads of multimedia stuff Let's see if I recognize a few yeah VLC media player um, always use that on Windows Audacity same thing uh, KDAN Live that is really good sort of like movie maker you can even make stuff really sort of amateurish just like a, the family holiday video or you could um, do something a lot more exciting with that. So yeah, that's a really good one. Um, but I'm not here to review that. Internet, we've got the oh, we've got the Conqueror browser. Um, conversation, funny. Thunderbird, obviously an email client. Chromium web browser as well. So yeah, I mean there's loads of built-in things here. We've got LibreOffice. I do like LibreOffice, very handy and free. ISO Image Writer. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I mean, these are all pretty popular Linux applications. Um, LibreOffice being cross platform as well. That's just brilliant. I wonder what version it is. I'm just trying a bit off topic here, but um, just curious to find out which one it is. It's five. Oh, 6.0. Oh. That's good. I don't think even I've got um, 6.0 on the Windows machine. <laughs> Better update it then. Right. Um, so this is the, well, it's version of Explorer. Oh, yeah. and it has got Snap as well. So you can snap Windows to any part of the desktop. I'm not sure if you can snap them to the bottom. Yeah, you can snap things to corners as well, which is nice. Um... So can you do top corners? And you can see the black box move around, well that moves around uh, when you snap it to one of the corners. So it's got quite a nice, obviously, um, look to it. I mean, hard drive, yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's really intelligent actually, because you can see here you can search through all the different op documents on your computer and um, it just looks through all of the, obviously, um, sound files, images, whatever, and sorts them all here. I presume, though, it won't show anything from any private encrypted folders, uh, as I mentioned earlier on in the video. Um, well, I presume it won't. <laughs> Might do. So anyway, Discover, I presume this is the, uh, sort of like a software application. Oh, it is a swell one. It looks lovely. Let's open this up. So we've got Blender. Really good for 3D modeling, as it says there. Animation and rendering. Plus my add-ons. I mean, this is mainly... Um, 
I'm not sure if this is just for this OS or whether this is uh, something that you always have in uh, the obviously Plasma desktop environment. I'm trying to look for the about section but I don't think it's anywhere to be seen. Yeah. As you can see here it lists all your installed applications as well which is rather nice. And you've also got options to remove them, which is even better. A lot easier than trying to remove something like Microsoft Edge from Windows 10. <laughs> yeah. That's all pretty good. So, um, it has got loads of built-in applications and I do like the UI of this. If this is in fact, um, well, if this is in fact just like a something for the Plasma desktop environment, then um, sorry about that. Uh, then obviously it looks good anyway. But if this is something native just to this OS, then um, I must admit they've done a really good job because it looks lovely. I mean, either way, it looks lovely. And there are several updates as well. I mean, this wasn't released too long ago. I don't only really think this was released about a day ago or so. Um, and you've got the option just to update them all at once, which I presume is working. Oh, password. Here's my ultra secure password again. Not so secure. Um. But yeah, that seems to be updating them all anyway, and it's got these little progress bars as you can see. All looks rather nice, really. Oh, and that's good as well. You can see down here these, this sort of tasks panel. Uh, that's got its own progress bar, so whatever it's doing, I suppose it appears down there. And when it's in act, well, when it's caught on something, then it temporarily goes slightly lighter in colour by the looks of it. Hmm. Very nice application. Um, I presume this is. Well, I thought that was like some sort of side panel, but no, that's just for adding widgets and things like that. Add space, I shall see what that does. Also, then you can add widgets, I suppose. Let's get an analog clock, shall we? That's good. So sort of reminds me of um, something that came along in Windows 7. We haven't actually. I don't think in Windows, no, um, that hasn't actually appeared since Windows 7, because I think they said it was too insecure, but um, it does look rather nice, doesn't it? Got Bluetooth options, calendar, calculator, very nice indeed. Don't know how we can move it though, I guess we'll just have to sort of remove it from there, and go up here and drag it into where we want obviously to be. There we are, we can pin it up into the corner there. It's rather nice. So that's about it. I mean I'll just play with a few other things. Don't think that's actually got anything on it. Um but as I say, I'm completely new to this OS and well it's been fun really. There's loads of different applications on it. The UI looks lovely. Um and well I've also enjoyed playing around with the Plasma desktop environment so I must say they've done a really good job and I mean I've really enjoyed playing around with this um, yeah and I think their choices of applications that they've actually included in the ISO file for this I think that's a pretty good choice and I mean they say their aim is to make as good as that out of box experience as possible and I think they've achieved that I mean it looks great and um, obviously everything works hasn't come up with any error messages or anything so well that's just about it for this video um, yeah oh hang on there's that Zulu crypt vault thing there as I couldn't quite pronounce earlier um, and I presume the obviously plasma one is somewhere else I can't see it um, but yeah, 
so that's basically it for this video. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. And I might actually end up installing this on one of my old computers that I've got lying around. Right, so that's basically it for today's video. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions at all, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And, well, until next time, goodbye.